Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, this is our third episode of the new Who Doctor Who rewatch. Um, if you want to check out the previous two, they're on the channel. Uh, with me, as always, is Liam, who is also uh, a regular YouTube uploader, uh, considerably more regular than myself or anybody else that I follow. Yeah. Uh, uh, and today uh, we're continuing with series one, uh, and it's episode three, The Unquiet Dead. Um, in this episode, Nine takes Rose to what he says is London, it turns out to be Cardiff which, again, turns out to be quite a good thing because they run into Charles Dickens and it's Christmas and there's ghosts and you can see where that reference is. Um, overall, pretty fun. Uh, what did you think of it? Uh, my favourite of the series so far, I bloody adore it. I, I feel like I've gotten older, I like the historicals more and more. Mm. So I, I have always enjoyed this one. Um, and when like Jodie's era and everything got going, it's like, oh, they've really excelled at the historicals. Um, and then I like, look back at all the older ones. I'm like, actually, I, I, I kind of like the historicals anyway. Um, but yeah, this one's really good. I think it's quite creepy at times. Um, easily like, the scariest it's been so far. Mm. Um, still a few funny moments. I think it helps that I'm a, I'm a big fan of Charles Dickens and his stuff. So I kind of fanboy anyway. Um, so yeah, I like the villain. I think there's some cool character stuff in there. And yeah, it's a fun one. And it would be interesting. Mark Gatiss said... Um, his original script was a lot darker, and Rusty Davis said make it more of like a fun romp. Uh, but I still think it gets quite dark at times anyway, so it would have been interesting to see exactly how gruesome it got. But yeah, I really like this one. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I thought my first note is literally feels very classic Who. Um, like, you know, with, even with the setup where it's sort of like only in a room, and it, you know, it felt very that kind of classic Who esque, and it was the first, it felt like that. And um, the first historical that we've got obviously of new i think it really sets the mark for most historicals i think especially with rusty davis he's he likes writers clearly because there's one in series three and there's one in series four i mm. don't think there's one in series two he goes for he goes for queen victoria, victoria doesn't he yeah. so he clearly likes his writers um mm. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I, yeah, I cool. think the format of like episode one, modern day Earth, then episode two and three, past and future, mm -hmm. they kind of swap between series. I think that's such a really good format to start a series off. Yeah, it really it it gives you like if you were just to show, if someone said show me Doctor Who in a nutshell, you could show them these first three episodes and be like, there you go. There's present day. There's time travel. There's there's different planets, different aliens, mm. and um yeah. I, so I I enjoy this one. I think. I, I don't know, I, I was a bit, not bored, but I was a bit like, oh, can we, can we get going a little bit? Um, and there's a couple of issues I have with the girl, the villain of the piece. Um, but we'll, we'll save that for a minute. Uh, so what, what did you enjoy most about the episode, I guess? Uh, Simon Callow as Charles Dickens, I thought was fantastic. It helps that he's a huge fan of the, ca um, the character, the guy. He's like written books and stuff about him, essays about him. He's played him in multiple occasions. He's done a one-man show about him. Uh, and I think he really gets that across. And when he's depicted in a lot of fiction, they normally like go about the prime of his life and stuff. But this is, you know, six months before he dies. Um, so he's near the end of his life. He's a bit more cold and bitter. I think the fact that he kind of has an arc a lot like Scrooge in A Christmas Carol is really cool. Um, lots of different references to that. I wrote a few of them down. Like when he runs out of the house, and like the Gelf inhabits like the door knocker, like the Marley thing, which I thought was cool. Uh, his very last line, uh, he quotes Tiny Tim from Christmas Carol. So like for the full circle journey with that. Um, and there's a lot of like Dickens references, like the, the Doctor's joke about the Bleak House, I completely forgotten about. And I burst out laughing because I really like Bleak House. Um, and the fact that this character, well, the real guy, they put him in um, and you can explore like a person's legacy through that. And comparing that to seeing the doctor and rose when they're on their own being like well you know we could die here maybe i'm you know i was bored in the 20th century or whatever i'm going to die in the 19th and she's not going to have that legacy and dickens kind of worries about that as well in like the final scene and everything i just love that his art i do have a little quarrel with it but i'll get to that um but overall i really like his arc i think it carries the episode for me and it is cool to see doctor who 
really focus on a historical figure like this because I think in classic who the doctor has like made passing references to like being friends with historical figures and there's been like one or two showing up but never to this extent really and I really liked how they did it yeah my my first one is Dickens as well um I particularly liked his sort of relationship with nine with the doctor um I just thought that obviously the doctor is literally a massive fan of Charles Dickens to start with but it's just the the sort of relationship they have like off the bat it's never sort of cynical you know Dickens isn't really like against the doctor even when he hijacks his carriage at the start mm. but the doctor helps Dickens sort of come to terms with his legacy and sort of with what he's done in his life and he sort of teaches him not to worry about it yeah I love his whole kind of deal of thinking well you know I've kind of learned everything I'm going to in my life and not really talking to my family has had some issues there um and then all oh, this happens he's like well have I wasted my life have I you know completely thrown away all these years and then he's kind of reinvigorated at the end I really like that journey and the tragedy of it knowing that at that point in six months time he'll be dead is kind of quite sad as well that's it like right at the start he says you know have, have I imagined everything that I'm, I'm going to imagine or something like that and then he gets shown this whole completely brand new world that was just yeah. right there um, but yeah, so I, I enjoyed Dickens, um, and I enjoyed that he had the sort of doubts, like he could write about ghosts and things, but he didn't really believe them. Mm. So it sort of gave that aspect of him just sort of doing it because he knew it was, you know, it would it would give him fame and sort of money. And then he goes on that that journey to sort of be like, oh no, it actually does exist, and I, I'm the believer now. And he yeah. literally he literally comes back to the house and he gets the confidence to go back and save. The Doctor and Rose towards the end. Um, I'll go on to with speaking of Rose, I'll go on to my second best bit of the uh, of the episode. And uh, this is, I shocked myself when I wrote this down. Uh, but uh, yeah, Rose, uh, I enjoyed her in this episode. To be fair, um, he's one of my positives as well. There you go. Uh, I thought I thought she really came out of the shell. Um, she did a lot more in this episode to actually try and stop the alien like even when even though she gets chloroformed and taken off in a carriage she was still doing more in those two minutes than she did in the whole of the previous episode Mm -hmm. um and she sort of really comes out and she gets into the spirit of traveling with the doctor even though they're gonna die um yeah and i mean there's the road there's the scene with um gwyneth as well which is similar to the plumber scene in the end of the world yeah, and but I felt there was a much more personal connection on this one, where because she was actually trying to get to know the person rather than sort of being yeah. shocked by it, I guess. And I was I was reading up on this actually. It's interesting that those two scenes and how much she likes Peter Rose's character. Um, that scene with her and the plumber in the last one was added because the episode was under running, and then in this one, her talking to Gwyneth about her dad dying was added because the episode was under running. And I, I, I completely forgotten that she mentions that her dad's dead in this one. I completely forgotten that. Entirely. Yeah, well, that, that was that. my um, one of my points I wrote down is that I think that this sets up Father's Day quite nicely. Yeah, they, and they only added Father's it in Day. because they were underrunning, yeah. so it's kind of cool that it worked out, really. Because in, in Father's Day, the doctor's all like, oh, you know, this is your plan all along to come back here and save your dad. And mm. at the time, I remember thinking, oh, yeah, maybe. But the fact that in this episode, Gwyneth sort of says, oh, your dad's been on your mind a lot, mm. makes me think that maybe she had been thinking, oh, maybe I could save my dad. So although it was added in late, I think it's it does really well to set up the future a future episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what, what else did you like about Rose in this episode then? Uh, yeah, I really liked her relationship with Gwyneth and the fact that, you know, she was defending her when the doctor was like, oh, we need you to do this, this, and then like, doctor, she's tired, like, let her rest for a bit, for God's sake, man. Uh, and she can get her point across and does challenge the doctor. I really liked that about using the corpses and, you know, what side are you on there? Which I also thought the episode dealt with quite well, like very interesting debates you can have. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was arguing there, but then there's also that mutual respect and that growing bond that they have. They can still have a scene like they do at the bottom of the cell in the dungeon about how they're so glad that they met each other. 
uh, so I thought like the main relationship Rose had in this one was done really nicely. Um, and the fact that she didn't blame him, the fact that she was probably about to die, I really liked. And she was just like, well, you know, let's just go out yeah. fighting and comforting each other. I, I really liked that personality. I wish we'd seen this side of Rose a bit more mm. as the show mm. continued. I don't know how much of this we get in the future, but yeah, she was really great in this one. Well, that was my other thing. You know, you mentioned the scene of them in the, in the cellar. And I think that this whole episode is the start of sort of Rose... Rose falling in love with the Doctor, I think. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and we see that more in series two, obviously. But there are moments in this where you can see there's that romance sort of blossoming between them, even though neither of them would sort of acknowledge it at this point. Yeah, I think that's true of the Doctor as well. When he's like, I'm so glad I met you, when he sees her in the dress and stuff, he immediately yeah. goes back on that and he's like, well, oh, considering you're human. Yeah, yeah. I think this is, again, we don't, the other thing is that we don't really get much of the doctor in this episode i don't think although he's in yeah. it and he does a lot we it feels kind of doctor light um he's, he's very much there to sort of just push the other characters along yeah because um, he's the one who has all the exposition really yeah but even though he's even though he's sort of in the background there is still more development in this because he still does does sort of i don't know he humanizes him a little bit more because you know previously a call out at the moment before this doctor he just killed a load of people and then regenerated into nine yeah. they still cut off from everyone but i think this episode and kind of the previous one does a lot more to, to sort of humanize him a bit more and get him a little bit yeah. more open and the fact that the girls mentioned the time war then kind of gets him on their side a bit so you can see that's still influencing him and affecting him yeah i put that in the girls played on nine's time wars regrets to get them to to help him uh, to help them um, but yeah, so what was your sort of third or any other good points? Yeah, my last positive, uh, the Gelf, actually. Same! <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> uh, I think creepy as hell, that opening scene, the woman screaming as she's walking up to camera, that really gets me. I think that's really creepy. I love that opening. I actually rewound round it and watched it again when I was watching it earlier. Um, and both as the corpses, I think they're quite creepy and stuff. I like the design of them when they're like CG. Um, all the blues swirling around and everything. Uh, I think the actress, I forget her name, who voiced them and like motion captured the main one as well. I think she did a fantastic job. I, I love the kind of childlike innocence those voices have um, and the potential intelligence that they have because we know Gwyneth kind of has all these like her sight and stuff because she's grown up living by the rift and that's influencing her. Um, so the fact that she has these powers, she can see into Rose's past and everything, she can see all about her. Um, the Gelf must experience that themselves. So it, maybe it wasn't that the Time War did destroy their bodies. Maybe they were lying about that just because they could see that that was influencing the Doctor. Like, oh, this guy, we can kind of prey on that. Uh, that's, that's fair enough. Um, the Gelf are on my good list, but this will also segue into my bad because I think that it's, I'm very sort of in the middle with them. I mm -hmm. really like the design. Um, you know, and the way they inhabit gas, um, and you know, the CGI is sort of so basic that it doesn't age. Yeah. Um, because it feels very 2D, even though it's you know all these ghosts. Um, so I like the design, especially when it turns into evil, and you're like, oh, they must be evil. They're red. <laughs> it's yeah. got like a big collar sort of coming up here. Yeah, I'll talk about um, that. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, the design I quite liked. Um, and the way they communicated through Gwyneth, I thought was quite an interesting thing as well. And it sort of mm -hmm. added in that, like they had a, a proper seance. It sort of plays on those expectations people have when they have a seance. You know, it never normally yeah. happens like that, which is also why Dickens is skeptical about it. Yeah, I think um, as a whole, like both the villains and the side characters, I think they all kind of really shine in this one. Like even Sneed, I think has a few really cool moments. And I was reading up on this as well, fun fact fans. Um, he was originally envisioned to be a lot younger, and they were eyeing up an actor called David Tennant to play him. <laughs> Don't know who that guy is. I wonder what he went on to do. I will never hear from him. Again, missed out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so those are the good parts of the girl. Uh, for me, uh, I was kind of disappointed that they ended up just being another bad guy. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I like the idea that they were trapped, that they needed help. Um, and then for them just to sort of turn around and be like, well, JK, 
we're uh, we're actually going to come and kill the human race. I thought was kind of disappointing, but maybe uh, well, Gators didn't want to try and do something that different, I guess, in the third episode. Yeah, I suppose. And at this point, it's like episode three of it coming back. I feel like maybe they haven't burnt out that idea yet of like, oh, we're actually evil. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I I don't mind it, but I thought that it was they were a more interesting alien when they were trapped and the Doctor had to help them. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's fair. I, I don't think the show does that enough overall. Mm-hmm. Um, it's There's never sort of, you know, there's never the, oh, some humans might get hurt, but we'll save these people. It touches on it maybe once or twice every other season, I think. Um, and then also it brings up the whole question of, could we use these dead bodies? Is that fine? Um, but yeah, I, I, either way, the fact that they turn out to be just a sort of generic bad guy kind of disappointed me a little bit. But um, mm-hmm. what what issues do you have with them then? Um, okay. For the, unlike the previous two, I don't have any legitimate complaints, so I've had to nitpick <laughs> again. Uh, like I said, I like this one. Um, since you already mentioned the Gelf a bit, I thought, I don't mind it, again, I can overlook all these, the fact that as soon as they turned evil, they went like red and orange and more ha ha, I thought it was a bit on the nose, I'm like, we're not stupid, we, we know, you're, you're already laughing evilly, so I can overlook it because it still looks kind of cool, but that's just a little thing, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yours is more nitpicky than my criticism, but it's alright, my, my one, my next one is a bit nitpicky as well, uh, it's Sneed. Okay. Uh, is it what Sneed's wearing? No, it's just him in general. I just, I just thought it was a stupid name. <laughs> to start with, and he's Sneed's name is stupid. Zero out of ten. Yeah, he's definitely at the bottom of the of the list of characters in this episode. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, I just, I just don't think. I don't know. I just didn't believe that he would be a real person. I guess. Yeah, I get that. But um. Cause he, I do find it. I do find it refreshing that he's like, oh, this shit again. We, you know, he's used to it at this point. But I can kind of see it's almost unbelievable. But I guess you don't want them. You don't want him to do that at the same time. Dickens is already having that storyline as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It was. I, I'm really not put much. I'm just put Sneed name and character. <laughs> so I just, I just don't think. I just didn't enjoy him. He was fine every now and then. I guess I'm happy he died. Uh, but he just, yeah, he just seemed very selfish. Um, he didn't really have any character development, unlike, you know, Dickens. Yeah. He was always sort of, how can I get this, get rid of this as soon as possible so I can go back to making money? Yeah. And I guess Doctor Who is sort of, does have quite a few of those characters. Um, you see in Voyage of the Damned, Literally, there is one guy who survives and is like, I'm going to get all the money. But yeah, he's done better than Sneed is, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I get, you know, that's, that's just me. Yeah, <laughs> what, I think what, that's was your, what was your other worst? Um, I have another two. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did say earlier about Dickens, you know, I did have a little thing. I do feel like his presence disappears a bit near the middle. I feel like it's more so about everyone else, and it's like, oh yeah, Charles Dickens is in this, isn't he? I feel like that gets a bit lost and muddled, and maybe they could have just had given him a bit more of a presence to make his arc really be sold better. But again, I don't really mind that. Um, and my last little thing is more like a writing thing. Um, when the Doctor and Rose are kind of debating and stuff, and the Doctor's like, oh, just give him the corpses, why not? And then later on, he's like, oh, you know, this isn't a permanent solution. I'll find you somewhere else. You can rebuild your bodies there. I feel like he didn't get that side of his argument across well in that first mm-hmm. argument. Like you, it made it sound like this was a permanent solution for you. I just think maybe we needed a bit more explanation that. But again, yeah. it doesn't really bother me. Yeah, he doesn't. I think when he says, well, you can rebuild your bodies elsewhere, that's the first time he's A, mentioned taking them off planet, and B, said they could build other bodies. Yeah, I don't know if like yeah. something was cut or anything, but if he said that, I think Rose would have been a bit more fine with him. Yeah. That's it, because even Rose is like, well, people don't, you know, there aren't ghosts around my time. And he's like, well, there could be. Yeah. Um, and then I guess also staying on that point is that this introduces quite a few things to the new canon for New Who. Uh, 
first of all, the rift is introduced, um, which plays a central part in a lot of Russell T Davies' stories later on. Yeah. Fun and fact, then... fans, are you ready? My <laughs> next fun fact. Oh. The rift wasn't originally introduced in this one, but they did it to make the girls' origins a bit more simple. Yeah. <laughs> what, were they, so what, were, what were the origins going to be? Just they were there. They don't say. Oh, it's just that it must have been quite complicated, and Russell T. Uh, Davis was like, "Ah, oh, screw it, we'll introduce the rift in this one." Oh, fair enough. <laughs> but I think but it makes. I get. Well, I guess that means there's two things that have been last minute additions to this episode that have actually helped the show. Mm. Um, I'm reading. Obviously... I'm reading the writer's tale at the minute, like mm. the expanded one, because I've never read it before. And it's bloody good. Um, how much of it is just like, oh, I made it up as I went along? I like, really surprised yeah, yeah. me. It's just crazy how things work out well for the show. Yeah. Um, just like, oh yeah, I had a random idea, or oh, I, I apparently set that up earlier, but actually, I, I had no clue that it was going to go that way. I think yeah. that's, I, I find that fascinating. You know? I don't, I'm not, I don't hold that against the show or the process or anything. I think it's quite funny. Yeah, Russell's very. You like reading that book, you can really get that Russell leaves a lot of stuff last minute. Literally, it's like, oh, the the episode's due in three days. Guess I better come up with an ending. Absolutely. But um. But yeah, so the, obviously it sets up quite a few things. Um, the Bad Wolf gets another mention, mm-hmm. which obviously um, sets up the series finale, and it, it it makes it a bit more threatening in this episode as well, judging by Gwyneth's reaction to it. Yeah. Um, obviously, the Rift, it sets up Torchwood. Uh, well, kind of sets up Torchwood and sets up the Doctor. I have to keep going back to Cardiff, which again comes into play later in the season with Boomtown. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, what else was there? Oh, oh um. I caught this as well. R- Gwyneth uh, calls Rose a wild thing. And I was like, that's exactly the kind of thing that Queen Victoria says in series two. Yeah. So it's it's a weird link, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's su- supposed to be some kind of statement on the way people dress in the, in the early 2000s. I don't know. Yeah, because she was like, oh, you're going about half naked for shame. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah, and obviously it's set up... Um, Rose's dad in the future um, sets up the whole time can be rewritten thing, even though it's a little bit more loose in this one. I don't think they've been set as many rules for this episode as they have in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on to my sort of third, I think. Worst bit, I've got two more. Um, first of all, the Doctor just accepts that he's going to die. Uh, I did think that was weird. Because like, they're like, just, yeah, everybody. they just sort of get stuck there and I'm like is that it? You're, there's not going to be a you can't sonic something or figure something out or do something um, and I think they rectify that kind of thing in the Empty Child and Doctor Dances because he's they're in a similar situation with the gas mass zombies in that episode for the cliffhanger mm-hmm. um, and they do something better with that but in this one it's very much a well let's hope Dickens comes back because if he doesn't come back with it yeah um, but that's that's another sort of minor point. Maybe he's maybe at that point he's still the doctor is like, well, I've killed loads of people. If I die, fair enough. Yeah, maybe he still hasn't quite found that release of life to keep traveling and keep pushing on yet. But it's like, yeah, you're still going to regenerate another two times yet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, and the other one, and I, I, it seems I'm going to bring this up every episode. Uh, Mary Gold's music. <laughs> Uh, this is in my negatives for this one, um, mm. mainly because, again, during that sort of final sequence, it doesn't feel very climactic. Mm-hmm. It's very sort of light and fun, and I'm like, they're surrounded by zombies about to die. What This doesn't fit. It's not a climactic, mm. we're going to die, it's not tense. It just feels very... I. It reminded me of um, during Partners in Crime, when... Uh, the Doctor and Donna are across the room and they're talking to each other. The music reminded me very much of that. I'm like, that this just doesn't fit. Yeah, those are two very different scenes. Yeah, but um, I guess those, those are my only, I guess they're kind of nitpicks, but and I, yeah. to be fair, with with my best and worst, I had to kind of think quite hard about what I did and didn't like, not because mm-hmm. I think it's a bad episode, but just because there's nothing there that's very obvious. You know, there's not a uh, an obvious yeah. good character. I mean, there's Dickens, but there's not like, you know, you could pick him out of the others. You know, there's not a, a standout moment yeah. really either. 
Um, and yeah, then I can't say I time. noticed the music in this one, to be honest. Mm. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing or if it did its job. But exactly. Yeah. And I think with Murray Gold's music, he, it does a very good job oh, later in the series and the whole you know, show as a whole. He does a very good job of making you hear the music when you need to hear it. Mm. But at this point, I found I found a little bit just too distracting. But I think at that point, I was like, hmm, I've not heard the music. Let me listen. Then I heard it and went, that's not good. <laughs> but, yeah, so I mean, maybe you're not supposed to hear it at this point. Maybe I just went looking for it. But, um, but that, again, I think, again, this is only Murray Gold's third episode on the show. So he does get better as the series goes on, obviously. Um, with that, and I think we hear that in sort of the next episode, so the music and that's pretty good. Uh, um, did you have any other sort of extra notes that you wanted to touch on? Um, I do not think so, because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, I liked the sort of costume change at the start, where the doctor to Rose, like, you need to change, and then she comes yeah. back and she's like, you've not changed it's like, I've changed my jumper <laughs> I'm like hang on a minute yeah that's that about as much count. as I could <laughs> wearing clothes so and they they clearly dropped the whole companion needs to get dressed for the occasion after this episode because it never happens again at all except mm. for maybe when Donna goes and puts on a big coat when they're yeah. <laughs> when they're on the ice planet I think well, and, and Bill gets dressed up in thin ice yeah I suppose but and Clara um, in Rob, Robot Sherwood Yes, but with Robots to Sherwood especially, that's, I think she does that on purpose because she knows yeah. what Yeah, she's she is Robin on fangirl, isn't she? Yeah, yeah but... There's like, definitely a big gap, I think, you're right, yeah. Because the Doctor... It's like says, Martin the Shakespeare okay. Code, just like, kill. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, that was another thing. I also like that this is an unofficial Doctor Who Christmas special. Mm, um, yeah. Because a lot of Moffat Christmas specials are set at Christmas, and that's why they're Christmas specials. Um, and this was set at Christmas, but it wasn't a Christmas special. So I think if this episode sort of fell into a, the Moffat era, it probably would have been a Christmas special mm. type thing. Yeah. Fun fact, yeah. fans. Gatiss set this at Christmas because a Christmas Carol is his favourite Charles Dickens story. I mean, to be fair, if, if you think of Dickens, you do think Christmas Carol. So it makes sense that it's set at Christmas, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and it enables Donald did... to make a very good joke in The Unicorn and the Wasp. Yes. Which, again, is another writer that Rusty Davis decides to throw into the series, which is great. Mm. Um, yes. uh, also, in this episode, it very it hammers home that Cardiff is bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why it, it, it takes it just takes just such a hard line on Cardiff. It's just like, no, Cardiff is terrible. Yeah, oh, well, I liked right. um, looking back, and like, Rose is like, I don't care, I don't care. I don't care. It reminded me of um, Jackie and Doomsday. I'm just like, I don't care about that. How rich. How much? Yeah. That must yeah. just be a tither thing. Yeah, well, speaking of Jackie, um, part of my thing about Rose is that she does gossip with Gwyneth, and I thought that was very Jackie Tyler. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you did get the sense, you knew that she was her mother's daughter in that episode. Yeah. She gossiped, and she was talking about, about boys, and, you know, flirting, and going shopping. I thought that, that was very much a a, a Jackie thing, yeah. Um, but I, I don't think there was too much else. Uh, oh, the only other thing, and it's a slight nitpick when they land and Rose has changed and they're going out, the doctor's gonna go first, and then she's like, No, 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 you've done this before, I'm going first. And all I could think was, You went out first last episode, what are you on about? Oh, did she? So, yeah, because he's like outside those doors is the whatever century or whatever, and she comes out. I wonder then, if they made this episode before the end of the world. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. That's what I meant. You know, I think you could definitely swap these two around. Like, you could definitely put Unquite Dead where End of the World is, and, you know, it wouldn't make too much of a difference. Mm -hmm. Because the last scene for End of the World is afterwards. I mean, other than maybe changing the costume, you could put that at the end of this one. Yeah, because so, when the girls mention the time war, Rose could just be like, what's that? As opposed yeah, to like, looking at the doctor knowing what it is. Oh, exactly. 
because this time was mentioned in the end of the in uh, Rose in the first episode by mm. by the nesting, so it's not going to be a a thing, and she can still pick it up at the end of this episode or whatever. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. Um, and then up next in the next time, it's going to be the Slitheen. Oh boy! And I am so excited for that one. I'm excited for Slitheen. <laughs> oh. It's an interesting one. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how I feel about it. Because mm. if I don't skip this story, if I rewatch, which I do tend to do, <laughs> I'll at least watch the second half. I don't tend to watch Aliens of London. So I'm intrigued to see what I think of it yeah. this time around. Interesting. Right. I'm a Slovene um, stan, don't get me wrong. But... <laughs> Who isn't? We'll see. Um, okay, well, before we sort of finish up, what would you give this? Uh, out of 10 obviously you mentioned you really like it so i'm expecting a high number yes nine Ooh, a very solid nine. point yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, fair enough um i think uh, i think mine's sort of staying around the same point as before i'd probably give this a seven i think mm -hmm. which slap bang in the middle of the three that we've done already um yeah, i think i liked it more than end of the world um i just mm -hmm. like the setting more i like the characters more I think it helps that Rose was better in this episode because you spend a lot more time with her. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it was still as good as Rose because Rose still feels very non-stop um, and it flew by, whereas this one again sort of... Yeah, because uh, you even said the end of the world and this one, you said like, oh yeah, let's just get going. So Yeah. But I, I think, do think Rose is the best paced one so far. Well, that's it. Is that I think with, with this one, it's meant to be slower because it's, it's got Dickens in it and his books take their time with describing things and all sorts. So because it's got right, I think it takes its time a bit more to set the scene and to develop things a bit more. Whereas the end of the world just felt a little bit too padded more than anything. Yeah. But still, uh, we're, we're, we're not that far off. You know, we, we haven't disagreed majorly on anything yet. Too bad. No. So, but, um, yeah, I guess that's it for the Unquiet Dead. Uh, next week we'll be back with, uh, I don't know if we'll do, what happens to the sign this, if you want to do a, a, a double double dose for the two parts. Oh, next week, doing we'll do both together. Of, yeah, I, I haven't quite oh, I haven't thought, thought out about yet. That, um, oh boy, we're going to be here for a this, while. This might set the precedent for what it's like <laughs> to come, because there's a lot of two-parters, obviously, throughout oh, the whole yeah. of Doctor Who. Um, but obviously next week will be the first, at least the first half of the first two part of the new Who. Um, World War Three. Uh, Rose's return to her family, uh, with with consequences, which I think I'm going to enjoy the fact that it, it has consequences. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if if you enjoyed this video, if you even stayed this long, um, and I put Liam's channel below, if you want to go and click on him, uh, along with our Twitters also down there not that we we tweet a load of shit so enjoy that um <laughs> and if you like uh, subscribe like and if you disagree with any of our comments do let us know what you disagree with uh but yeah uh that's it and we'll see you next week bye <laughs>